Hello everyone and welcome back to my attempts to build the International Space Station in Realism Overhaul in Kerbal Space Program 1.1.3 and this mission already in progress was STS-102 which is supposed to bring the external stowage platform 1 to the station. It's not really a station assembly mission and I actually forgot to press record on the launch for this mission so I didn't capture that but um, here we have an EVA. What we're really doing on this mission is not anything to do with the external stowage platform, but STS-102 was my way of adding a docking port to the Destiny module so we could mount the solar arrays. Uh, right now we don't really have a way to put the solar arrays because this, they're basically just welded to the station on the Destiny module uh, in front of the Z1 truss and uh, yeah we just didn't have a docking port for them. So that was what this mission was for. It was also carrying an MPLM, uh, multi-purpose logistics module, which is basically a resupply module for the station, and that causes a little bit of a problem later on. I had tested the shuttle with uh, loads in the back before, but for some reason, uh, well, you'll see eventually, uh, this does not go well at the end. But uh, here we are, deorbiting of course, we've got our our periapsis in the atmosphere and everything seems to be going well. The load was not an extremely heavy load for the shuttle so we had plenty of fuel to spare and here we are descending through 81 kilometers in altitude the shuttle glowing a bit red. No flame effects though I wish there were more flame effects here and less uh, and inappropriate times later on but here approaching the coast of Florida that's Tampa Bay in front of us we are still on the automated KOS script for descent here, uh, going through uh, 45 kilometers, which is where this script uh, pitches down the shuttle. I'm not too sure where the shuttle actually started to pitch down, but the aerodynamics of this particular shuttle demand that it starts to pitch down here. Uh, probably the real shuttle does not pitch down until later, I've been told that. So uh, here we are descending now, and I take control at about 11 kilometers altitude. Cape Canaveral is well in range, no problems as far as trying to push the glidability of this. Actually, that might be part of the problem. After all, I'm so used to having to glide this for longer distances that uh, having it so close meant that I was going faster when I actually approached the runway. Another problem was that I had been playing X-Plane 11 and I got used to knots instead of meters per second, so I might have been misreading the velocity a little bit and just uh, not translating properly in in the numbers that I've been playing with with other aircraft. Uh, but anyway, we touched down safely enough, uh, but we were not stopping. I was trying to get to the drag chutes, but the drag chutes pulled us off to one side, and we toppled. Now, maybe, uh, we've of course used the drag chutes safely before, so I wonder if it's because of the load in the back that the drag chutes did that. At the end though, I landed way too fast and should have adjusted uh, my flight profile a little bit. So, but anyway, uh, unfortunately the Kerbals were lost on that mission. But we persevered and continued on with the next shuttle mission, which was STS-100, which uh, was the shuttle Endeavour carrying Canadarm2 to the station. This is actually the second attempt on this mission, not because there was some tragedy, but because the first attempt involved Canadarm not really gripping the station very well. You see, uh, initially Canadarm 2 required a little uh, grapple points and I just couldn't figure out how to get to safely grapple them while separating it off from the other side. It would just float away. Thankfully, viewer Gaming with Sean told me about a patch for Canadarm 2. This is the RKE Canadarm that allowed it to have a magnetic end just like Canadarm 1 has in the Space Shuttle cargo bay. So that will allow us to grab onto the station magnetically and then decouple from the Space Shuttle and attach to the grapple point and that will be a safer way to go than what we have been doing otherwise. So this was the second attempt with that magnetism and here we are docking at the station. Unfortunately, the solar panels are, I swear, they're more askew now than they were before, but we'll have to readjust those at some other time. Now, I swear, we're, we're uh, docking in uh, good ways with respect to the 
solar panels, but somehow we end up with one of the solar panels clipping into us. It's weird. I had to retract the solar panel to avoid that. Anyway, here's the final docking procedure. It takes a long time. The Space Shuttle RCS is not wonderfully balanced with respect to this particular docking port. But there we are, and yeah, I don't know how we ended up with the solar panels clipping into us. I swear uh, we, we were approaching in a way that wouldn't have that happen. Anyway, uh, so first thing, we needed to EVA to attach the grapple point. We can't just have the Canada Arm 2 magnetized to the station and let it be like that because that's not a proper docking. It's a separate vessel and when you time warp or leave or quick save and quick load, it'll just fly off. It won't be uh, attached to the station. So we need it to be attached to a grapple point. So with the grapple point properly placed or at least placed in a good enough location, we proceeded to use Canada Arm 2. This is a little bit complicated, it's got a lot of joints, and because it's got two separate ends that are basically equivalent and I keep getting them mixed up. Also, when it says pitch, yaw, and roll in the servo controls, that doesn't necessarily correspond to what I'm thinking of as pitch, yaw, and roll in the moment because its orientation has changed. Anyway, uh, we decouple from the other end. We hope that uh, there we go it does magnetize the station there was still a possibility actually I think uh, we lost it twice before this worked out so there were two times when it flew it off but this time the magnetism worked it's still a little bit better than using the grapple point that would take a lot more uh, attempts to make sure it attached to the grapple point the magnetism it works a little bit better though I might want to up the magnetism just for the sake of simplicity We'll see. Anyway, uh, here we are trying to attach the other end to the grapple point, and you'll see how how finicky it is and how precise it has to be to line up with the grapple point, much more than just uh, randomly magnetizing to any surface that it happens to be perpendicular to. The grapple point also, because of the collider of the Destiny module, is a little bit buried into it, so made it a little bit more difficult. Not, I mean, we could, you can see, we're taking a look at, at it like that. And it's not attaching right now. We don't have to separate the other end. Uh, if it's going to attach to that grapple point, it should. But uh, this is how close we get, and it still doesn't want to grab onto it. That's why we have to use the magnetism instead of uh, trying to do this and constantly separate the other end of the, from the shuttle. But there we go. Finally, we got it. And just to mess with us, Kerbal decided that the end effector on the other side should break off and float away. Um, this turned out to be because it had a, sort of a low braking tolerance and uh, in the next flight I would fix that because there's no way it can grab onto another module to place that module if the end effector is constantly going to break off even with the stress of just Canada Arm 2's weight. But anyway, we eva again to grab the end effector and place it back onto Canada Arm 2. And thanks to some help from the audience again, uh, because I didn't really know how to attach things to nodes in uh, with uh, KIS, and that was necessary information, obviously. Okay, so Canada Arm 2 is all set, and once again we were carrying an MPLM in the back of the shuttle, so that was another thing. Once again we had uh, more mass in the back, and again, I tested the shuttle with mass in the back, bringing it back down to the KSC before I started on this entire idea of doing the International Space Station. So, should work, but also once again, I was in the middle of that SR-71 flight I've been doing in X-Plane 11. And unfortunately, after the previous crash with uh, STS-102, I really didn't diagnose it properly, I think. Um, especially the flight profile going down towards the runway. After all, by the time you get to the runway threshold, there's very little you can do about your speed. You're not going to be able to uh, do a go-around with the shuttle, because it is a glider. So, you either land or you don't. Also, I think I was too concerned about the drag chutes being the cause of the problem, and not as much focused on the fact that we 
really weren't uh, landing at an appropriate speed. But anyway, I take control here at uh, 45 kilometers because it looked like we were passing way too far north. Taking control this early allowed us to easily change course. In retrospect, it might have been better if I had let it uh, go a little bit further and take control later because then by the time I got to the runway we'd be going slower. But uh, here we have a lot of excess velocity. And one way to get rid of excess velocity is to do exactly what the shuttle does and pitch down 20 degrees instead of what I was doing which was pitch pitching down about 10 degrees. Pitching down 20 degrees would uh, get me to the lower part of the atmosphere, the thick part of the atmosphere sooner and then I would have to pull up sooner and that would mean that I would bleed off more speed. But the way I was going, the way I was gliding um, prevented me from bleeding off enough speed and that resulted in a very high approach velocity and well you, you can tell what I'm getting at here. Uh, I, I've been leading up to this for quite a while. This was not the most wonderful sequence of two missions. Another problem was the landing gear I think, as far as skidding off of the runway to the right is concerned, the landing gear is partly to blame. And this time, certainly not the drag chutes, because we didn't get down to activating them. I actually changed the drag chutes the way that they were configured on the tail, in response to the previous crash. But we, we didn't even get to deploy them this time. So, one other fix I did was increase the size of the landing gear. And another thing I have to do is just make sure that I'm more cognizant about how we are getting to the runway. Otherwise, the return script is doing very well, as we can see. So anyway, that's where we're at. At least we got Canada Arm 2 on the station, but it's been really devastating to lose two crews like this on landing. And uh, we will continue. Uh, the next mission will carry the Quest Joint Airlock to the station, and that will be STS-104. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.